All right, so let's get you up to speed on where we stand right now with the project and what we plan on doing today and uh, in the upcoming weeks. So we're gonna be taking a few valuable things off of this truck, like the catalytic converter. Uh, we're gonna drain the gas out of it. We're gonna get the fluids out. And this whole chassis engine transmission, that's all gonna go to the scrapyard. There's a four nine inch center section we'll pull out um, because we had some racing buddies that could use something like that in their hot rods and their race cars. Um, otherwise, um, I'm gonna get in here and start cleaning out uh, up underneath the dash and get the, the HVAC out of there and you know some of the controls and just be ready with the cab to weld in our cross braces because we don't want the the cab to do any weird flexing and moving as we cut the floor out of this thing and so uh that's part of what i'm going to try and accomplish today i'm going to get jacob and micah going on the the bed we're going to cut the bolts lift this thing right off the off the the frame and that way it's mobile we'll probably have it on a cherry picker or a cart or something like that we our intention is to try and keep all the sheet metal and the bigger pieces of this project uh, mobile so that's why we have the caster wheels and we're going to be using the hoist for not only the crown vic but certain pieces like we are here now so um let me show you uh, this week i went out and started making my my shopping list and my to-do list um, you guys are probably like us where you really like um, roadkill and hot rod garage those guys are always using cardboard and sharpies for their lists and we're doing the same kind of deal uh, my shopping list included a uh, set of cab corners that we're going to be putting on this thing now full disclosure i'm not a body guy i don't pretend to be a body guy i'm just going to be kind of <laughs> doing my best but uh rock auto came through and and uh had had these they're very inexpensive i think these are like 12 bucks a piece so i'm like dude that's amazing and it's gonna be a lot better than rusty holes with sticks and twigs and leaves poking out of them so <laughs> got, got the foliage package here definitely a, a midwest farm truck so <laughs> we'll uh we'll put some new sheet metal on there uh we got some new door weather strip to to go on and uh, hopefully seal up that cab a little bit um, for the crown vic we got some new front struts we got new rear shocks that we're going to be putting on because we want this thing to handle like a cop car should and there's definitely some miles on this thing you know it's gone up and down the road quite a few times and so it's time for some fresh parts and uh, i'm not sponsored by napa but i would love to be someday uh, the shop that i work at is a Napa Auto Care Center. So I get a nice discount for sure from Napa, but um, we would love to see corporate Napa come on board and be a sponsor of the show. So hint, hint, hope you're watching Napa. Um, but yeah, we're gonna do a tune up on this thing. Got some spark plugs coming. Um, we're gonna take care of that exhaust noise up by the manifolds. So we're gonna put some new, new hardware up there. And uh, last video, you probably saw that the pinion seal is is leaking on that thing so we're going to try and right a lot of wrongs along the way as we do this we want to do this project the right way and uh, this is going to be the daily driver for my son and so we want to try and make things you know updated and trustworthy and and uh, make it an actual cool truck to be able to drive every day that's uh, that's kind of our goal for today is at least getting this chassis rolled outside and able to go to the junkyard and get our sheet metal on caster wheels around the shop. So let's jump in, here we go.
time for a quick kind of update where we're at we spent the afternoon kind of just cleaning up the firewall getting everything up underneath the dash out of the way this main part of the dashboard is actually welded in and stays and then this outer section that kind of the the front fascia of the dash is just held in by four bolts and so we took that off and the the wiper motor the wiper linkage we plan on keeping all that in place and I will actually plan to either utilize the Crown Vic wiper motor or we're gonna wire this stock f-150 motor to the Crown Vic wire harness in the car one way or the other we're gonna get the the 79 wiper motor and linkage and everything to work with this cab and so we'll have to do some trimming or some creative ways to get that to work but anyway we're at this stage now that we're gonna actually brace up the the cab and we got two pieces here we're gonna just make kind of an X and then we can start cutting out our floor so before we did that I just wanted to stop and kind of show you guys bring you up to speed where we're at but things are cleaning up nice really happy with it it's gonna be so awesome to see this rot and stuff get cut off and we're gonna have nothing but good solid steel and we're gonna keep some of it um, because it's in great shape and if we need to be making patches and little tiny gaps to fill and things like that when the cab comes down on top of the Crown Vic we'll still have some good sheet metal to work with so anyway that's where we're at we're gonna get grinding get some uh, paint uh, scraped off um, make make some tack welds and uh, then we'll probably call it for the night and hopefully tomorrow or maybe you know some evening this week we're gonna come in here with the, the cutoff wheel the sawzall maybe the plasma if we need to and we're gonna cut the floor out of this thing so yeah let's get to it so I wanted to show you the wheels that we chose for our project uh, these are actually 18 inch steelies that came off of a all-wheel drive Ford Taurus police interceptor and um, what uh, we really liked about these is the fact that they're 18 inch so they're gonna have a, a really nice diameter to them and uh, they're eight inches wide they're actually in really good shape um, somebody had repainted the fronts already a um, little bit of rust that we'll deal with but they're 18 by 8 and uh, we're not gonna leave them the black color uh, we decided that we're actually gonna go with uh, kind of a ivory uh, I think Rust-Oleum calls this a gloss Navajo white, but we're gonna do something like that Just to give the the old brown truck kind of a two-tone look and uh, so While we're gonna use what little bit of daylight we have left here this afternoon and we're actually gonna paint Or not paint we're actually gonna take some paint off with the stripper and we're gonna take this stuff off first instead of trying to sand and we'll see how well this works i've had good luck with this stuff in the past but we're just going to spray it on let it sit for 15 or 20 minutes or so should be all bubbled up we'll hit it with the pressure washer and see if we get down to bare metal again and that way we don't have to sand and sand and sand especially because somebody just recently sprayed fresh black on these so anyway we could leave them alone i think they look pretty cool as it is but i think going with ivory on those wheels is gonna be that special touch on the pickup that'll just really set it off so anyway let's get to it let's give it a shot here we go we'll let this sit and do its work for about 15 minutes or so and hopefully it all cooperates I think these wheels have only ever been black from the factory on the inside and then the guy we bought them from off of Facebook marketplace he uh, he just did some rattle can on the front side so looks like there's a little rust on the back side but not too bad the other stuff that I've used is uh, like a quart or a gallon of this stuff with a paintbrush but I thought we'd give this spray stuff a try see how it does 
especially since the main part is already fairly fresh. I thought probably pretty soft paint hasn't cured real long. So better chance of it coming off. All right. Flip them over. Do the front side. This might kill the grass. I don't know. Good thing it's fall. Guess we'll find out in the spring, huh? Well, um, you can see that the paint stripper is working, uh, the areas where it's bubbled up. I was actually hoping for more, and maybe I need to leave it sitting even longer, but it's been about 25 minutes now. The instructions say 15 minutes. So I've already given it more time, but could be maybe we just need to get the first layer off and then do more after that. I'm not really sure, but we're gonna hit it with the pressure washer see what happens we're losing daylight so if we end up having to go through the same process a second time that's not the end of the world but i do know there's a couple layers of paint on this stuff so it might take some effort let's find out okay so i wanted to show you the plan that we have for the interior of curtis low the 79 f-150 and I have these seats that I got out of the junkyard and I think they're gonna be perfect because they're period correct. Uh, they're so ugly, they're beautiful, I, I love them. Um, and they're from an old Dodge van, so they're the low back bucket seat. Uh, I got them out of the RV from the scrapyard. And so anyway, I think they're gonna make a perfect match for the chocolate brown and um, light tan that we have planned as kind of the theme for this entire truck. The reason that they're all taken apart is because at one time I had disassembled these things with the anticipation of using them in the cab over project and therefore I was gonna send these out and actually get them recovered in red to match the cab over. Uh, they sat for a few years, nothing was happening and my son Micah saw these in the basement and he's like, hey dad, can we use those in the truck? I think they'd be perfect. Because originally the plan was we were gonna use the Crown Vic seats in in the pickup but these are going to be that much cooler and they're going to sit low and they're the perfect color so other than one little tear and a little bit of the vinyl i think we're going to try and repair that from the back side hopefully hide it a little bit they're in really awesome shape other than that so um that's kind of what we're doing here today is we're reassembling there was one of the two seats had kind of a twisted bent frame when it was removed Somebody got a little bit carried away with uh, with tearing them out of there, and, and the, so the seat frame was a little bit tweaked. But I got it straightened out as best I can, re-welded. What we're actually going to be doing tonight is we're going to get the seat tracks off of. Uh, actually, just follow me. I'll show you. Doing a little bit of you know just unbolting where I'm where I need to, and then um, we may end up having to use the cutoff wheel or torch a couple things and stuff like that. But I want the springs, I want the action to be able to move and obviously they're the perfect height to sit on the, on the, the floor pan uh, perfectly and being manual. I got our seat base brackets taken off of the Crown Vic uh, seats and just was test fitting right now with the frames that we're gonna be using from the Dodge truck good news is it looks like it's going to fit just perfectly so I'm going to cut off the excess from the old Crown Vic sides and then it looks like our bolt holes are going to line up perfectly so we can actually just bolt this thing together instead of having to weld it which is good news yeah that's going to sit nice and low in an already low truck so obviously there will be some cushion under there but this is about as far back from the firewall as I think will be or so. And they already have kind of that rake to them that's gonna stay that way because obviously they're not adjustable backs on this thing. So yeah.
So tonight, hanging out with the boys on a Friday night in the shop, and uh, we're doing some of the things that are necessary on the Crown Vic, even though they're not like sexy to do, they're not super like classy or fun, but it needs to happen. Like, you know, spark plugs, tune-up, oil change. Um, I actually went to the local Ford dealership and I picked up some pieces that I knew we were gonna need. One of them is uh, these little rubber bushings right here. I'll show you where they belong on the car. And our lower radiator support, I think Ford calls that a cross member, but it just goes underneath our radiator and was kind of banged and bent up. So we're doing stuff like that and just kind of preparing this thing to uh, go to the next level. But yeah, again, it's not super fun, but it's gotta happen. Let me show you where those bushings go. These Fords, they have a tube that connects your shifter to the steering column right there. And you'll notice when you go to shift some of these old Fords, they have a lot of play in them. And you can see that there's movement just like that. And that movement shouldn't be there. Those bushings are super easy to get at right now. And uh, just thought, you know what? It's gonna make the steering column feel that much tighter and better by putting those in now. So that's what we're working on. All right, carry on. Time lapse. Now that we know that the paint stripper didn't do a great job of getting our surface prepped on these wheels, I decided that I'm going to go after it with one of the tools that I use in polishing that's uh, actually, it's kind of like a Scotch-Brite pad on a wheel with a uh, variable speed grinder. And uh, it's primarily something that I would use on like this, aluminum getting ready to polish, you know, so it would be for corrosion, for getting clear coat off things like that. And those wheels come in a couple different flavors and uh, you know, some are way more aggressive. But I'm gonna do something like that. Um, be sure and wear safety uh, stuff. You really don't wanna breathe that dust. It's, it's gnarly stuff. But um, these work really well, primarily at lower speeds, you know, 1,000, 1,500, something like that. That stuff will really cut. And uh, again, I'm not trying to get all the paint off um, and get down to bare metal necessarily. I just want to uh, scuff it, give that paint something good to adhere to. I'm going inside and out because uh, I want some of my paint to show through, not just black on the back side. So time consuming, but the better that I do with my prep, the better the final result will be. So just wanted to show you what I'm using to get my steelies prepped here. All right, well, you know the deal, acetone and a lint-free cloth, give them a quick wipe down, and uh, our wheels are just about ready. All right, this has been shook up 
for about the last 15 minutes and should be good to go. This is primer and paint together. I've always had pretty good luck with it, doing pretty good uh, coverage and not having to pre-primer it or anything like that. And of course, you know the deal on this too. Lots of light coats, not too heavy, no streaking and sagging, things like that. But you wanna do enough that it actually is gonna add here. And uh, so anyway, if you wanna see how these wheels turn out, you're gonna have to tune in next Saturday and uh, we'll leave it at a little bit of a cliffhanger. So thanks for coming along. If you want to uh, interact with me directly, you'll find me over at Instagram. It's at flannel underscore Philip. And uh, again, I don't see the comments here on YouTube, but thank you to everybody who's been subscribing lately, following along the build and looking at some of the other videos on the channel. So thanks so much, everybody. Peace and greens.